Hey, it's Joe Glass from the Automator. And the other day I was verifying phone numbers and with the API that I was using. And I thought, you know what, let me document this. It's just a simple one. We're not gonna go too in depth. We're gonna walk through the code. Uh, but before we do, I wanna remind you of this URL above my head here. I got a lot of training on APIs. And so if you go to that, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the web page here. Uh, this is a redirect, but you'll get here with the APIs. And, you know, we have this uh, API syntax writer, which is an auto hotkey syntax writer, helps you write your API calls, which is really helpful. This Fiddler, this one and this one, they're two different ones, depending on your version of Fiddler. But it's great because you can look at your browser traffic or your auto hotkey code and actually see what's happening and diagnose, you know, are you doing something wrong or use your browser to do an API call and then be able to imitate exactly what the browser did. So it's really helpful, uh, which brings up a good point of, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a web service API, which is very specific in the sense that we can return data simply like as JSON or XML or YAML. And so we're gonna walk through that, uh, not like a normal browser, which typically returns just HTML in total or does like, you know, 30 calls when you load a web page and it has sometimes has a little bit of JSON in one of the calls. Uh, this is just very specific, so we're going to cover that. Uh, I also want to mention, just while we're here, this query string builder. This is where you can get the function that I'm going to demonstrate in the video, uh, which is just a handy way. It just All it does is puts together the key value pairs in the way you need them. So if you look at a study of URL, you'll see the very first one, it'll come up with a question mark. And that's so the first time through when a and x equals one, it's going to put in a question mark and then it'll be the key and the value. And then the next time through and every time after that, when there's another key value pair, it'll use an ampersand and then the key and the value. So this is on here. It's very simple code, but um, you can grab it from here. Now, the service we're going to use is this 24-7. Now, it is a fee service, just FYI. Uh, the pricing, though, if we go to the pricing page, you'll see the lookups are super inexpensive, so it's not a big cost for anything. I think I'm using the Append 24-7 phone. Um, maybe that's the one I'm using. I can't exactly remember which one we're using. I know we're appending the uh, the phone with the address and name of the person. Uh, verify data. No, this is the verify. You're verifying it's correct. I think it's a data append, and we're appending the phone number. So it's four cents per lookup which, uh, you know, if you're doing thousands, it would add up. But in this little example, we're not doing that. Uh, but notice some of the smaller ones are, are super cheap. If you want to find out the carrier or uh, do other stuff, it's super inexpensive in order to do this kind of stuff. So uh, it's pretty awesome. Oh, by the way, there's also is a $12 a month fee. And let's say you have, you paid them 20 bucks. And so the first month you'd, you'd have the $12 taken out of your account and then your other transactions and then let's say you did a dollar's worth of transaction. So that would be $9. So next month you'd have $11 left. So you'd actually go in the whole a dollar um, and then they would block your account, but they don't keep charging you the month after that another $12. It just would stop there until you pay up. So it sounds a little bad at 12 bucks a month, but it's 12 bucks a month, but they don't, they cap it after the first month. So it, you know, it doesn't keep going unless you're using the service, of course. Uh, now, while we're here also, I wanna go to support to API documentation. And here's where you can download a PDF of their documentation, which is really cool. Or you can jump through and, and look what you're looking for and find it, right? And here, this is actually a handy one. We're gonna uh, we're gonna borrow this because this is the key value pair. So here, our key is always out, and the value is either JSON or XML or YAML. It's the format you want. Oh, they are all lowercase. So this is a really good one. We can test this if I remember to. But auto hotkey, of course, is not case sensitive. However. The HTTP request, the service you're connecting to sometimes is. So make sure you pay close attention to when they document something, do it in the same case they do, just to not have to worry about it. And uh, all right, let's go back and let's go into the code. Here we go. And uh, you can, again, this is the that URL you can go to to uh, access a lot of that stuff. Uh, I am, by the way, using Coco's library, which you can get here to parse JSON, which I just love because it, uh, you know, the, the data will come back and we'll look at it first before I shove it into an auto hotkey object. But that's what I'm doing with his his class is taking it and getting it back and putting it into an auto hotkey object. So I just use an include here because I think it's a class. So you have to have, yeah, it's a class. I wrote myself a note. Um, you can't just, you, if it's in your library, it won't work because you have to have an include on a class, unfortunately. Uh, this secret, by the way, this is, once you sign up with an account, they'll give you a secret. And I just didn't want it in the code here. I'd always have to go change it after. This is my little workaround where I have it in a file and that way you can't see it here, which is great. Uh, great for me at least. 
and the uh, endpoint, so you're always going to have a place where you're going to, right? So this, and they, they structure theirs, you know, all, this is why it makes it so hard, is all web services are different on how they do this. This one in particular, they actually keep it with one URL, um, with one endpoint, and then you pass in the parameters of key value pairs, so the API is this APR, uh, and that was, I looked up in that documentation. And what are, what are the other things it needs? So here's the key and the secret. Now again, the first time through, it's gonna say uh, the question mark key equals, and then my secret. And then the next time through will be ampersand API equals, and then APR in capital letters here, right? Uh, and then it'll be ampersand phone equals, and then my this phone number, which is an old phone number. Of, it's my old Google voice number. Um, and in this first one, we're saying, hey, this out, which I got from here, the out is going to be JSON, right? Uh, and the, the first time we do it, we're going to do JSON, and then I think we'll, we'll try a couple other ones just to see how they look. So I'm going to save it. Now let's go into here. This is my API call, which is just a function I wrote just so I have it handy and I can just pass it different things. And notice we pass two parameters. There's the endpoint and the query string, right? So the query string... Um, is right here. This is where we're calling it. This is the actual thing, but we, the query string in here and here. So this is the query string builder. That's what we're passing to it. And let's see here. So it's a get request, right? Sometimes it's a post request, or I think there's like five different types, update and delete or something like that. But by far 99% of the time you're doing either a get or a post uh, request. Make sure these are in uppercase because that actually, again, that does matter. And uh, these are different headers. Now, we can test this. I'm not sure if we need any of them, but let's leave them on, and maybe I'll remember to turn them off and see if we even need them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. When you're imitating browser traffic, it's better to keep them closer to what a, a browser would have. But on this one, I'm paying for this. They're, they're doing their best to try to make it easy for me, so I'll be surprised if I can't comment on at least some of these. And uh, so here is that parse JSON function from Coco, and we're taking that response... And we're passing it to here, and then we're going to shove that into this OHK, which will become an auto hotkey object. And But here, I'm going to display down below here the JSON, because this time through, it's a JSON response, right? So let me launch it. And notice, here's a JSON string that gets returned back, right? Which, it's you know, it's when you're used to JSON, it's readable. Like, I could understand this and read it, but it takes practice, right? But Maestria, so notice I returned... Oh, not there, sorry. Uh, right here, I returned the auto hotkey object, and up here, I'm shoving that into data, and so Maestriath's M function, if it's an object, it'll it'll parse it for you. If it's a string, it'll just display the string. So let me rerun this and show you how shoving it into that object makes it really easy to look at and go, oh, if I wanted to access any one of these things, like if I wanted the city, I could, I could do a message box to say, actually, let's just do it. So message box percent data because that's the name of the object and then response dot oh yeah results dot one dot city so i'm gonna save this reload it and run it actually oh, there we go and now i hit okay and as long as I, so see it says lone oak that was because that was in that object right that's that value mm -hmm. at that um key value pair so we access that now Let's, instead of just looking at JSON, let's change it to XML, right? XML is, is, used to be much more common, but now it's not nearly as common as it used to be. So here, oh, and we can get rid of this now, because because it's this function right here is expecting JSON, it ends up breaking it, right? It doesn't return anything of value, but right now we don't really care about that. We're just looking at here is the data in XML, and if we change it to YAML, which I think is a little easier to read, a little easier on the eyes, yeah, so where I thought I commented that out. So yeah, so see how easy that is to read? T O M L? I don't know. Oh, oh, that's interesting. It's T O M L. Maybe that's similar to YAML? I'm not sure. Yeah, that looks good. I don't, I'm not sure what that is. Where is it? Oh, that, there's that next message box. Excuse me. Here we go. And so what we could do CSV. So this is a cool API because it allows you, usually you have like either JSON or XML. This one's pretty handy that allows you to have a lot of different options. 
And I think that's that's pretty cool because, you know, it just depends how you want your data, right? This one I could probably copy and paste into Excel very easily. And then this message pack, I, I looked at this earlier. I, I don't know if any of you guys have ever played with it, uh, but it was, it looks like it's some sort of encoded. It's for something that's encoded in a certain way. I'm, I'm not sure what, I don't know what that is, but yeah, let's, uh, that's interesting. Let's go back to the JSON and let's turn this back on so we can see it. We'll delete that. Now what I'm going to do. It, uh, first, I always like doing this, just baby steps, right? I'm going to rerun it. Yeah, everything worked the way I hoped it did. Notice everything is populated here, right? And this, where's the okay? Status, okay. Like, that's the big one, right? Status, okay. All right, now let's go ahead and comment out. Eh, let's do these two. Well, there's only three anyway. Let's comment them all out and see what happens. So it's still everything worked fine. So I don't actually need, I don't know why I have those there. Maybe at one point I needed those. Because uh, I would it'd be very surprised if, you know, didn't put them in for a reason. Because normally um, I, I like to comment things out. And then if I don't need them, I get rid of them just because it's less things that'll break, right? Uh, so I could theoretically delete these. But hopefully you get the idea. Uh, APIs are really powerful. They're a great thing to have in your toolbox. You know, study, learn how to use them. I have, I'd say, at least a dozen, probably more videos on doing API calls to different endpoints. And... The, the hardest part is that stupid OAuth authentication, especially when it's OAuth 2, and, and you got to do a, a shake, a handshake beforehand, so you send them some stuff, they send it back, and then you take what you get back, and then you use that in your next call, right? It's really not that complicated the first time through. It's a little troublesome, but once you get used to it, it's not terrible. Some of them are more painful and harder to do, but most of them have a, a simpler way. A lot of them are built for like using a smartphone. And so they're really not for, for what we typically use with auto hotkey. They're not expecting a computer for doing this stuff, but the developer will have a certain type of account. And that usually requires like the OAuth one, which is very simple. And that's what we're using here is like an OAuth one. There's no handshake involved. It's just that here is your, your unique ID password and password type of thing. And, uh, but they're all still different. So unfortunately, you don't just learn, hey, I learned APIs today because it's like every one of them is different. So I hope it helps. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.